And then the word defibrillator for today when we are trusting God for a word from within the word. Matthew 6. Now, when I'm looking at the scripture for today, I thought I'll go back just a little bit because it does say uh, when we are going through it. Uh, Matthew 6, verse 14, where it says that, for if you forgive their, tr- their trespasses, then I go, okay, so if, what is preceding that? Didn't realize it. And when you pray, verse 7, do not heap up your phrases, multiply words, repeating the same ones over and over as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their much speaking. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. What is the point? Absolutely, what is the point? As to why we need to pray then. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Why must I ask God if He already knows? Well, you see, the Spirit of, of God was hovering across the waters. Why was he hovering across the waters? He was waiting for the Father to speak. And when the Father spoke and said, let there be light, light was formed. So, well, let's carry on and see what happens as to why we need to do this. It says, pray therefore like this. Are you ready? Maybe you've heard this before. Verse 9. Father who is in heaven, hallowed, kept holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven, left, remitted and let go of the debts and have given up resentment against our debtors. This is the Lord's Prayer. And lead, bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. He does know your every need. But it's for us to take what we sit. You know, when we say our Father who art in heaven, it's you sitting on the same seat according to, G- uh, to Ephesians 2, 6. You and I share the same seat that Jesus sits on in the throne room. So you're praying the Lord's Prayer out of the throne room. So picture yourself sitting on the same seat as Jesus. Jesus is to your left. The Father is on the other side. And we go, our Father, mine and Jesus' Father. Because of Jesus Christ, I'm in the throne room. Co is with Christ. I am part of the kingdom, part of the family. There is the Father. Jesus says, When you ask, don't ask me, ask the Father, but ask the Father in my name. I'm the one who gets you here. So we're praying. It says there, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's where you're sitting. You're sitting in heaven. And what are the conversations that God will be having about you, your family, your wife, your husband, your children? Those are the conversations that you need to be discussing here outside on earth. So whatever's been spoken in the kingdom, in the throne room, gets spoken on earth so it can come to pass. Jesus says when you're going to speak, you know, you need to choose choose life or death because that's what's in the power of the tongue. And I advise you to choose life. As you, a man speaks, so is he. We have that amazing power to manifest the discussions of the kingdom of heaven from the throne room here on earth. What kind of conversations are we having? And right as it comes to the end of the prayer, verse 13, And lead, bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then immediately in verse 14 it says, For if you forgive people their trespasses, This is still a discussion in the throne room. This is still Jesus saying, when you're going to pray, this is how you pray. Don't throw big phrases. Don't have big words as if you're beating down the door. It's pointless. You're already in the throne room because of me. You're sitting with the Father. What are you trying to beat the door down? Are you trying to beat the door to get out? We don't sing praise and worship to get into heaven. We sing praise and worship because we are in heaven through Christ Jesus. It's a manifestation of that absolute excitement and joy and that knowingness that I'm part of it. That I'm in the presence of the Father. But the crazy thing is, yeah, in verse 14, for if you forgive people their trespasses, you have to. You cannot hold on anymore. And listen to the Amplified Version. 
For if you forgive people their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins. So there's reckless sins where people without thinking will just do things to you. They will sin against you. And there are times where they know exactly what they're doing. And it says they reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go. Leaving them means walk away. Letting go means stop dragging them with you. Stop holding on to them and give up resentment. How do you and I, as we were speaking about yesterday, that if we live in the Spirit, we need to walk in the Spirit to the presence of the Holy Spirit brings out peace, joy. It doesn't come out if we're holding on to unforgiveness. If we don't give up resentment, that anger, that pain and that hurt, sure, it is sore. I'm not taking that away from us. When somebody sins against you, it is terribly painful. It is really, really sore. But you have to be healed. When you and I get harmed in any way, we're going to go to the doctor and the doctor's going to give us some advice and saying, listen, if you want to be healed, if you want to live a full life, this is what you need to do in order to, to live. And sometimes they, they have to, they might take off a body part. They might remove something from you in order that you may live. You're going to have to give it up in order to continue to live the full life that God has got for you. And yes, Jesus is saying, you need to let people go. It is so, so important. In verse 15, he says, but if you do not forgive others, their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go and giving up resentment, neither will the Father forgive you your trespasses. And whenever you are fasting, do not look gloomy and sour and dreary like hypocrites. For they put on dismal countenance that their fasting may be apparent and seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have, a, they have their reward in full already. You've got to live the life of Jesus Christ as a crown. You and I have the honor of fellowshipping with the Father in the throne room because of Jesus Christ's righteousness. And we're praying out of the throne room. And yeah, he's saying, listen, guys, just walk away from unforgiveness. It's like you drinking the poison, hoping the other person is going to die. And you need to let them go. It's not our business to get revenge on behalf of everybody else. You can't turn around and say, well, if I forgive this person, they're going to get away with what they did. They never do. Guaranteed. But boy, isn't it so difficult just carrying that burden, that pain and that hurt and that resentment that's a tough one for us both it's a difficult one so come together because we want to walk in God's fullness let's just let go Heavenly Father we forgive people their trespasses their reckless and willful sins leaving them letting them go and give up resentment, Father, towards them. And we know, Father, we do this because we know it's important. But, Father, what we receive from you is forgiveness from you. As Jesus Christ did on the cross. Father, he had all the justification to resent the world and what we did to him. But he said, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they do. And in that our sins were obliterated. If he can, if he had to, why are you and I any different? Father, we thank you that we have that strength. And Holy Spirit, we pray that we've made a decision to forgive, but the pain and hurt is still there. The scars, the wounds, some wounds are really, really fresh. And we just pray for healing in that area in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for your peace that surpasses all understanding to God, our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Write that name down. Put it on a balloon. Let it go. Let them go. It's time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done for us. And thank you, Holy Spirit, you are here with us. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.